Hello, I'm Cass Westover, the Weapons Master and Property Supervisor at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Today on Backstage at Home, my assistant Persephone and I are going to fabricate antiqued letters and let you in on some awesome trade secrets. These small pieces of paper actually involve a lot of planning and thought. Letters are an incredibly common plot device from Shakespeare as well as other historical playwrights. They bring significant news which drags the plot forward. Of course, the opposite is true. The lost letter in Romeo and Juliet causes all kinds of problems. Chicago Shakes has also produced two new musical adaptations of Jane Austen novels. And if you've ever read any of Austen's books, you know that so many of the characters' lives are positively entwined with letters. Although we have so many digital connections to each other right now, there's nothing nicer than receiving a real letter from a friend or relative. Persephone and I are going to send some letters to our siblings while incorporating paper prop techniques. You might as well play along at home. I'm going to send a letter to my Oregonian brother, Tony, in a Renaissance style. This is Persephone. She's going to write a letter to her sister in Colorado in the Regency style, similar to what we did in Recently Closed Emma. When I mention these styles, I'm referring to paper coloration, font, size, layout, and type, and how they would have been sealed and sent. The first thing you need before writing a letter is the paper, of course. At Chicago Shakes, we often use Tyvek, which is a paper made of a synthetic polymer. We use it because it withstands the folding and unfolding by sweaty actor hands way better than re regular paper does. And it has an inherent implied texture, not unlike parchment. It starts white, but we apply a silk paint called Dynaflow to give it an aged look. We also have a variety of parchment papers in our stock, which are great in a pinch, but we're going to use computer paper and antique it for our letters. Or is it core antique? Persephone is using the tea dipping method to tint her paper. You might have actually done this before. It doesn't age the paper too terribly much, which is actually perfect for the Regency era, since their paper would have been made from plant material and emulsified linen rags. I'm doing something similar, but with coffee. I'm trying to mimic parchment, which back in the day wasn't paper at all. It was cleaned and stretched animal skin. When I add the coffee grounds here, I'm hoping it will have a darker, more organic appearance. It's in a low temperature oven to speed up the drying. Now that our paper is dry, we can add a little shadow or fake dirt with spray paint. The best spray paint in the universe is Design Master's Glossy Wood Tone, which, trust me, is the first thing you need to put in your Prop Master kit if you ever venture to build one. Always use spray paint safely by working in a well-ventilated area. Make sure you let it off-gas too before working over top it. In the theater, we source the words directly from the script. Unless the actor opens but does not read the entire letter out loud, in that case, we get to create our own content. Once we have the words, we put them into Adobe Photoshop and apply a handwriting font. Since the audience will be able to see the text, we trace over it to give it some personality. See how these letters are a little different? We're ready for words. Persephone is using this pen for her letter and tracing over a printed copy. You can accomplish this same technique by using a window, a light box, or if you're careful, a computer screen. If we were to go through all of this trouble and use a regular big round stick pen, it would not feature all our hard work. Even though Persephone and I are using fancy pens, something as simple as a fine tip Sharpie can work really well. I'm using a calligraphy pen and referring to a fancy letter set that I've arranged in Photoshop. Since calligraphy takes a lot of concentration and practice, I'm using a light board to keep me on track with my letter. My favorite thing to do is add an ink spatter. I'll admit, this can get pretty dramatic. There are a lot of great videos for how to do calligraphy really well. This is not one of them. We want these letters to be as historically accurate as possible, so we're going to continue sealing them up. 
In both the Renaissance and Regency periods, the letters themselves acted as the envelopes, though there are some key differences between the two. Watch how Persephone is folding this letter. It almost looks like a note you might pass in high school. Persephone was in charge of printing, painting, and folding all the paper props we built for Emma, so she's had a lot of practice doing this part. Folding my letter is a little more straightforward, but the wax seal is pretty fun. You've probably seen people use wax like this in the movies. This true wax seal is meant to open once, so we need to do something a little different on paper props. At Shakes, we use hot glue wax seals. It's the same process as with wax, you just need to wait a little longer for it to cure before removing the seal. After we've painted it the right color, we hot glue it to one side of the letter and add a little bit of sticky tack to the other side. That way, the actor doesn't have to struggle to get it open. Now, we don't know for sure, but we think it's best to put our letters into modern envelopes if we want them to arrive safely. We've tinted these envelopes a little to look antiqued, so the recipients will know they're in for something special. That's all from us. If you end up making a letter like this, please share a photo of it on Instagram and tag CST underscore props. We can't wait to see what you've created. And in the spirit of goodwill, love all, trust a few, do wrong to none. So long for now.